Ahmed Hamid, you are currently exhibiting some of your architectural renderings at the Netherlands Flemish Institute in Cairo, a show that is expected to run until June 6th. Now, can we begin by talking a little bit about these renderings and what do they represent and how do they fit in in the larger scheme of all your architectural work? Um, I, I would start by explaining that the rendering tradition of architectural projects belongs uh, to the practice of architecture uh, as a binary field, meaning that it is partly science and partly art. Architecture is the discipline that binds very well and binds in a very balanced matter. It matters both. In this sense, practicing architecture within the artisanal studio is a tradition that comes forth from the 19th century and it belongs to the insistence that tradition though, that architecture though formed of multiple dimensions that exceed the third dimension even, it can be still represented, zipped, compressed on the format of the two-dimensionality of a piece of paper. This is why the renderings bring in an atmospheric presence, it brings in a color scheme, it brings in the birds, the flora, the fauna. It brings in an entire context where the building is not perceived in isolation or uh, as a singular entity. It belongs to a bigger world. And somehow this is very important in contrast to the production of architecture today where mainly mega projects act as singular objects of desire or singular objects of uh, expressing a wow effect, a shocking effect, and an astonishing effect. This is not my purpose within my practice. But to bring back a balance between the man-made and the God-made environment, to bring back a balance between uh, a mood that is created, a suggested atmospheric presence, as I've mentioned earlier, within the buildings of walls, windows, spaces, volumes, and masses. Why the title Extra Time? Because that's the, that's the name of this collection. Extra Time is somehow uh, a catchphrase where we are stuck somehow, but we just have some extra time. And this is what I mean. The tradition of producing these renderings to an architectural project, to take the time instead of the computer-generated program models, uh, instead of simply editing the architectural production to masses and volumes that are devoid of a certain life or personification of the architect or his studio or his assistant's uh, dimensions uh, or color schemes or proportionalities, or brings this element of urgency that it hasn't died, it's not archaeological, it hasn't been completely uh, usurped by technological advances, we can give it some extra time. And this extra time somehow is like a breath of life once more to the tradition and to the production of architecture within this sense. Now, in your book the, called Hassan Fati and Continuity in Islamic Arts and Architecture, The Birth of a New Modern, published by the AUC Press in 2010, you have a number of stunning renderings by Hassan Fatih. Is this common for architects to do this with their work, their projects, to render them as As I mentioned somehow from the 19th century this tradition was more prevalent. Hassan Fatih is the person where I came across that the renderings, his gouache, there are, they are 13 in number that are published in my book, represent an, uh, an entire presence. They they do not simply concentrate on the, on the building, it's a whole image. And this image has the building in situ, it has the building full with a narrative, sometimes with a shepherd, with some ducks, geese passing, like the, the photographs of uh, Henri cartier Brousson, where just a cat fleeting between the train's tracks uh, brings in life uh, into the sterile, uh, rigid, sometimes nature mort of modernity. The sterility of line drawing somehow uh, is suggestive, but it's still sterile. 
Le Corbusier used continuously line drawings to express his ideas, whether to communicate with other architects or to other clients. Somehow the rendering is more of an insistence and an intensity to keep art within the realm of architecture. When Le Corbusier brought in art, he painted separately paintings that became partly and parcel uh, uh, the main foundation stone of the school of pur purism. It is important somehow to keep architecture, to keep practicing, if you want to say music, to keep on practicing biology, to keep on practicing physics, to keep on practicing all the disciplines, but within the realm of architecture. This is how somehow I, when I practice some calligraphy, I'm a devout collector in some cases. I take it back, the flow of the curvilinear, complementing the rectilinear, I bring it back to my architecture. I cannot say I'm a calligrapher at all, and I do not uh, publicize my calligraphy, but it's a training. It's partly an exercise to go back to the field of architecture with a fresher look, with more grafting from other disciplines. So these are not paintings per se. They have all been renderings for certain projects that were calculated and designed and drafted in an architectural scientific manner. The image at the end bears this. Uh, entirety of coloration, proportionality, temporality, plasiality, all in one, on a two-dimensional plane. And I find it more amusing and more complex than producing a cardboard or a styrofoam model or producing a, a 3D generated computer model, which we do in our office at the moment. Mm -hmm. The entirety of my rendering collections are almost 70. 20 of them have been sold out and we're left with 50 in our archives. The exhibit of extra time is minuscule as well. We're exhibiting only 11. And usually I exhibit an odd number, not an even number. Why is that? Belongs as well to, to, to many traditions, partly Islamic, partly Japanese as well. The respect of the odd number belongs more to the life tradition. The symmetry of the even number more or less belongs to the mortuary tradition. Very well. Thank you very much for this lovely interview.